Do you have any uh any favorite memories of the 24 no? Oh man, that was a wild. I'm thinking about that now. That was actually insane. It was a crazy Just time. Think about 20 like we're only what are we six right now or seven nine. We're 16 games in. The amount of uh team meetings we've had the amount of drama has been around we haven't won a road game like all this other stuff as it currently stands hopefully when you see this we've won a game (laughs) but hopefully when this comes out you you will have have beaten houston (laughs) a part of it is like that's a long time to hold like coming off a championship to hold down like this level of excellence uh 20 like eight more games and we still haven't lost. It's, it's, it's wild to wrap your mind around, but we were still in that kind of FU mentality to the whole league because people were talking trash about our, our, our first championship and, you know, all the injuries and all that, like all the, the, the narratives that came out of that. So we were kind of, uh, we were more motivated than ever. But I think the, the, the memory that I got is just when it ended because we, we played, uh, Boston. I had a Boston Milwaukee back to back game twenty four and twenty five. Boston game went to double overtime. We ended up winning. We got to the hotel in Milwaukee at like four in the morning. I had a, the quickest turnaround ever. We get to the uh, the arena in Milwaukee and they have twenty four and one shirts like in the stands for their uh, whatever that section that they have uh, that goes nuts. And they had twenty four and they're just chanting it the whole game. And it's like. That's really not a. It's really not a dig. <laughs> it's not what you think it is. <laughs> like I actually took one home after the game. I was like, "Yeah, I appreciate it." Um, you know, I mean, the other teams are twenty four and one at one point, so appreciate y'all for uh, calling it out. But they ended up winning. Obviously, we were we were a little uh, we were a little slow in that. But twenty four and zero was crazy. To think about on the on the reflection piece. How do you contextualize or think about two thousand sixteen? Because it, it was. Again, as a as a peer, a competitor, as a now observer and someone who has to talk about these things, it was one of the most magical seasons in NBA history. Sure. You guys go 73 and 9, you get to the finals again, you have a unanimous MVP season. You take this jump too in 16, where you were great in 15, MVP, all that, like you were the best player on the best team. Like, but there's a jump that you made in 16. How do you sort of contextualize that year as part of your career? It, it comes with a lot of uh, emotions, right? You, I mean, you just explained it really well. The seventy-three and nine chase, you know, starting twenty-four and zero, coming off a championship, getting everybody's best shot, and still winning. Uh, I don't know at what point we started to even talk about seventy-three and nine. I'm trying to like it was probably right after the All Star break. You start to think about oh, if we win, you know, seven out of eight games just the rest of the way we're gonna get there and then it became uh a huge talking point probably the last 20 games and we carried that all the way through and actually got it done i remember that game set uh 82 two games going on at the same time us playing memphis chasing the 73rd win meanwhile in, in la it was uh kobe's last game uh playing against utah and scoring 60 whatever he did so just NBA was at its at its height. Uh, and then we go through the playoff run, and I actually here at the, in Houston, I've slipped on the floor and busted my knee. Was out for however long. We come back, and Game Six, Clay was born um, in OKC. Then you get to the finals, and you're up three one, and you're already kind of counting. You know, the win is like, oh, we'll just get it done. Draymond suspension, and all that. It kind of is a little distraction, but you're like, we're still right there. Like, we're about to be two time like defending champs back to back and the whole vibe. Um, and know how it ended. What I, what I say about that 3 1 situation is I've never seen two guys play at that level for three straight, for three play, straight games. It was the games. craziest thing I've ever yeah. seen. Like, Bron and Kyrie were just on, like, we play well. They just play better. And it was, it was, it was hard to watch and be in that vibe where you couldn't do anything about it. And, uh, you know, we still had an opportunity to win game five and seven down the stretch. And then the, the Kevin Love possession, which is one of my, like, if there's like one play, like, I know I should have done something different. It's that one. Um, it was like, it was 
way more uh there's way more time on the clock than i thought me trying to answer Kyrie's three over me was kind of in my head and you know you force up a shot and you kind of lose momentum and they they win on your home floor uh but you can always tip your hat to somebody who just outplayed you and that's what they did for three straight games so the whole season was was insane to think about all the experiences we had the fact that we have a 73 and 9 banner in our practice facility but no uh NBA finals banner that year still hurts but uh you know, it's part of the part of the journey. And every time I see Kyrie, every time I see Braun, like there's that respect of, you know, those, those five years were crazy. Or four years playing against them were crazy. Um, just fast forward to 17, I think game one of 2017 was the best basketball that's ever been played. Like on both sides, everybody was at peak form. Um, it was it was the most intense, most exhilarating game I've ever played in. It was the first game of the final, so. Uh, all that stuff you remember uh, pretty vividly. As always, thank you for listening to the show. Please subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, Wondery, wherever you listen to your podcast. Uh, we appreciate you guys. 